Well hello everyone, my name is Oliver Lake and today I'll be talking to you about my thesis which is on the topic of the systems engineering approach to the remanufacture of a rail vehicle. So the problem statement for my thesis is to determine the engineering requirements to remanufacture and repurpose spare train carriages for regular revenue service on a rail network. Now most modern trains consist upon thousands and thousands of parts, so obviously we need a stable methodology and approach to determining the appropriate de design methodologies and products. Systems engineering offers an inter interdisciplinary approach and means to enable the realization of successful systems. It defines customer needs and functionality early in the cycle, which in turn creates requirements, th synthesizes the design, and validates it as an iterative process. Systems engineering is uh, cross-disciplinary and is a structured development process. Systems engineering can be taken to requirements engineering as well, does take into account the whole scope of an asset including the, oper the operations, the cost schedule, performance, training and support, the testing of it, manufacturing and finally in the disposal of an asset as well. The methodology for my design project is based on the, the V model. V model consists of several stages in the design, namely conceptual design, all the way through domain design, whether that be electrical or mechanical, integrated through validation verification, and back down the stages as the design becomes more mature. Naturally, requirements may change throughout the design process, and likewise the product as an output. A train, system, a train as a system could be quite difficult, therefore functional block diagrams do aid in defining the systems and their role. The functions of a train can range from anything from enabling traction, i.e. the motors, all the way to the brakes retarding the motion. It can also include things such as couplers and passenger information, as well as aesthetics and environment, and everything in between. So the design brief is to take two spare control trailer cars, which are regularly part of a Tangara train, as a motor car, a motor car and a control trailer car. Motor cars do have motors in them, as well as a lot of high voltage equipment in the roof. The control trailer cars don't have motors in the bogies, however they do contain all the control equipment in the, guard, in the driver's compartment, as well as the panograph and some high voltage switch gear. My thesis will establish a way of combining all the parts from a motor car into a trailer car, and then join out to another control trailer car to create a two car Tangara set, as opposed to the regular four car set. As you can see here, the Equipment does differ greatly between a control trailer car and a motor car. They, are, they both contain air conditioning modules, however there is much less high voltage equipment on the roof of a trailer car compared to that of a motor car. So the balance here will be finding what systems are not required on a control motor car that you can keep on tra the tra control trailer car and then use the motor aspects from the motor car to squeeze into a control trailer car. Underframe equipment is quite lucky, the bogies between the two cars do actually bolt straight onto each other and redundant items such as compressors here on the control trailer cars and main reservoirs does provide a lot of space for the equipment on the motor cars as well. However, there, is, there will still need to be some shoehorning as there is much less space on the roof of a control trailer car compared to the roof of a motor car due to the angle in the front there. Here we have two control trailer cars coupled together in the train yard as it to give an impression of the final concept design. Note that these haven't actually been constructed but it does give an impression of a two car Tangara. Moving forward now that the system has been conceptually defined as well as systems have been designed at this point is to continue the detailed system, system design and validation to create a final product on the right hand side here. Validation of the design would involve further mass budgets and structural analysis of the vehicle, weight distribution for body roll, as well as finalising a location for the hot, high temperature, high voltage equipment that's usually roof mounted, namely batteries and brake resistors. The design does then have to be verified against the initial requirements and regulatory standards. Thanks very much for your time.